week and be watching a film, um, a really, really good film. The name of the film next week is The Lemon Tree, but it's strangely not the lemon tree that you're reading. It's actually a completely different story, a completely different film, but for some strange reason with the exact same name. So I don't really know how to explain that to you, but uh, but it's a very good film, very important, really gives a, a personal look at uh, this, this situation. The second thing that I want to kind of mention, and I already emailed this out to you before, is an opportunity this summer uh, to go to Israel, Palestine. Um, and actually there's two, two programs I want to tell you about. Uh, I'm on the board of an organization called Abraham's Vision. It's a um, sort of conflict prevention uh, program for college students. And uh, we do we have two trips in the summer that I think you might be interested in. The first one is to Israel, Palestine, and the second one is to the Balkans. Uh, and they're both about a month long. The Israel, Palestine one is June 29 to July 22. The Balkans is June 24 to so July 18. And what these two uh, trips allow you to do in a very small group with college students all across the country, maybe like 20, 25 people at most, gives you an opportunity to spend a month actually in the field. In Israel, Palestine, you go to the West Bank, you go into Gaza, you stay in Jerusalem, you get to actually speak to uh, Israelis and Palestinians who are on both sides of this conflict, you get a chance to talk to people working towards peace, you get a chance to talk to people working against peace. Um, and it's a sort of month-long seminar, but in the actual field, you know, where, where this, this conflict is actually taking place. Um, you get uh, credits for it. You can get between two to four units, uh, depending on, you know, what you need or what you're looking for. So it is a credit, uh, a unit-giving uh, program, and there are fellowships available. There are fellowships available. So, I mean, I think, I don't know what the cost is. It's not that much, actually. The cost is actually pretty uh, pretty cheap, and it includes room and board, and I think it also includes your flight. Uh, and then also it includes the units. But I want to tell you where you can sort of get, those of you who are interested in this, you can go to Center for Transformative Education. It's a long one, but write it down. Center for Transformative Education. Or if you have questions about this, specific questions about this, you can email C-T-E-B-I-P, so I think that's basically, I don't know what that stands for, but C-T-E-B-I-P at Abraham Vision. If you've got, you know, this time free, and if this sounds like something you are interested in, especially for those of you who are thinking about maybe studying history, or political science, or religious studies, um, you know, this is an opportunity that you're not going to, you know, be able to get again. So, two trips, Israel-Palestine and the Balkans. The Balkans, of course, is also really fascinating. It's a little bit different than what we're talking about here, but, you know, what you're going to be doing in the Balkans is going to, you know, get the place in which one of the worst genocides of the last 50 years took place, uh, the genocide <laughs> massacre between the, the Serbs and the Bosnians. Um, so it's a different landscape, different issues, but the important thing is that both of these give you an opportunity to delve headfirst into issues of conflict resolution. How do you, you know, go into a situation 
in which you have such intractable problems and so much violence. I mean, in the case of Israel-Palestine, you know, 60 years of conflict between these two sides. In the case of the Balkans, an actual genocide that ultimately took place there. Um, and then how do you bring people together and learn how to actually communicate and deal with you know, resolving some of these conflicts? Um, so for those of you who are thinking about maybe going into uh, majors that have something to do with these kinds of fields, international studies, law, politics, history, religious studies, this I think would be a really great opportunity for you. So if you do have questions about this, and as I said, there are fellowships available, it's C-T-E-B-B-I-P at Abraham's Vision, and this is where you can download the application, Center for Transformative Education. Any questions about that at all? Yeah, I have one comment about the, about the Balkan script. I have a, I actually know a phrase in civil liberation that could be a cultural that mine. That means help me. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Just in case you, in the Balkans, and you find yourself in a <laughs> sticky situation. That's a good line tonight. Um, all right. So, Harold did a pretty good job yesterday of kind of briefly taking you through the timeline of the peace process. What I want to do is sort of back up just a little bit. And in fact, instead of, before we back up, let's actually move forward. Let's talk about what's going on right now. You know, President Obama came into office a year ago, and part of the pledge that he made is that he was going to get involved deeply and personally in this Israeli-Palestinian conflict, like most of his predecessors had done. President Clinton spent eight years in the region, shut shuttling back and forth between you know, Jerusalem and Damascus and Cairo and Beirut, uh, trying really hard to kind of bring all the different parties together, really create a, peace, a lasting peace process between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Didn't really work, unfortunately, but I mean, he did, a, he did a very good job of trying. His predecessor, of course, George H.W. Bush, also did a, a, a really marvelous job. In fact, he was probably the only president uh, in recent history who has actually tried to put enough pressure on the Israelis to stop their settlement activity. It failed, ultimately. Um, but, and then, of course, you know, H.W.'s uh, uh, predecessor, Ronald Reagan, again, also worked very hard on this issue, sent uh, a whole host of ambassadors to the region, constantly shuttling back and forth between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Even President Carter, President Carter brought, uh, you know, the, the main, uh, the principal uh, people involved in this conflict together, at, at, at that time it was, you know, Egypt and the Israelis, uh, on the White House lawn to actually shake hands. C President Carter was the one who ultimately created a peace process between Israel and Egypt, these two countries that had fought, remember, three wars against each other. Um, Israel at this point now has a peace process. Remember, the wars between the Arab countries and Israel in 48, 67, 73, were between Israel and Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. And currently, thanks to the work of previous presidents, both it, Egypt and Jordan have peace treaties with Israel, so they are at total peace. Egypt and Jordan are actually allies of Israel. Syria, not yet. Syria is still kind of out in the cold, but from what everybody you know, in the foreign policy establishment will tell you, that's not going to last much longer. In fact, President Obama just recently uh, re-engaged Syria, uh, sent a, uh, a new diplomat over there, in the hopes, in the process of bringing a peace deal between Syria and Israel. So it could very well be that by the end of 2010, by the end of this year, these four nations that have fought, actually not three wars, four wars against each other, uh, could be completely at peace. There's just sort of one nation left, Syria, uh, for, that, for that puzzle to be complete. And yet, despite all of that, there has been almost zero, zero 